particular, having said that, um, uh, Himmer identifies, uh, so having this broad uh, definition of um, um, uh, market imperfections, Himmer identifies two main uh, drivers, so two main factors that may, that may create benefits for the firm, in under, so they, they may associate benefits, they may create benefits when the firm undertakes foreign direct investments. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, associated with the fact that by undertaking foreign direct investments, firm can increase market power and this can increase basically profits. Okay? Uh, what is the reason? Well, the reason is that uh, when you undertake foreign direct investments, you can increase your market power in a different way. One way is that basically you expand your productive capacity. And so, for instance, you are better able to exploit economies of scales. And this, of course, makes you much more competitive in the market because it allows you to lower your production costs and average production costs. And therefore, this allows you to, in a certain, say, in certain way, increase your market power. Another way is that, of course, if you, uh, which is more demand-based, is that if you undertake foreign direct investments, you enter a new market, you expand your consumer base, and this allows you, again, to increase your market power because you can reach more consumer, you can expand your market share, and this allows you, in a certain way, to, if you operate in a regime of imperfect competition, to uh, increase your market power and, therefore, uh, increase your profit. Okay, so both these factors uh, exploit the fact that market imperfections exist and also introduce another thing, which is that if you increase your market power, you increase further the imperfections in the market, and so there is a cumulative effect in the gain that you can obtain. Okay, so you exploit an imperfection, this allows you to, via a productive increase, uh, also an increase in productive capacity as well as an increase in consumer base, you can increase your market power, this increases your profits, but in a certain way, if you increase your market power, you increase also the imperfections in the market, which implies that you can profit even more for, from extending the market power, and so on and so forth. Okay? So there is a cumulative causation between imperfection and um, market power that you can uh, profit from. Another factor that is also relevant is what Himmer defines the removal of conflict. And here the idea is the following. If you undertake foreign direct investments in a strategic way, the company that you acquire in the foreign company can not be a random company, but can be, in particular, a potential rival firm. Okay, so, if there are already rival firms operating in the, foreign in the foreign markets, and you get control over them, so what you basically do is you transform a, a potential conflict uh, coming from the comp potential competition that comes from this company into a uh, uh, into a firm that becomes actually part of your own uh, um, uh, of your of your own company. Okay, so you basically remove potential conflicts due to competition in the market, and by doing this, you can again increase your market power and therefore increase potentially your profits. Okay, so. These are two different arguments, but they lead to the same conclusion. You undertake foreign direct investments to increase your market power which, and, as a consequence, to increase your profits. And these are the main benefits that are uh, sort of like uh, uh, that, that counterbalance the extra costs that I was uh, discussing, um, uh, discussing before. Okay, so. As I was saying, the combination of specific advantages and which are basically uh, the one associated with uh, increasing market power and removal of conflicts allows the firms to earn extra profits via uh, these um, uh, uh, these uh, foreign direct investments. And uh, the key point of this is just just to summarize. The key point of this is that uh, you can earn these extra profits. Uh, thanks to uh, the existence of market imperfection, and moreover, the behavior of the firm led to food can lead to further increase in market imperfection and therefore to further extra profits. Okay, so if we want to summarize basically Himmer's seminal work, uh, I think this um, um, this um, table is actually uh, a good uh, a, gets a good summary. So on one hand, you have 
the extra costs associated with foreign direct investments. These are, let me just summarize, communication and acquisition costs, costs due to less favorable treatment by host governments, and costs associated with risks of exchange rate fluctuations. On the other hand, you have the benefits that are due to market imperfection, which is increasing market power and removal of conflicts. The point of humor is that whenever the benefits are larger than the costs, firm may decide to undertake foreign direct investments. Okay? So, this is an interesting, uh, actually, argument, because uh, it, uh, focus on, uh, um, it focus on... It uh, focus on... Um, now, what are the advantages of this um, of this of this theory of this approach? Well, the, 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 the main advantages are that this theory is developed in a fully coherent approach, in a sense. And also, uh, basically, uh, it was a theory in a field that was not existing. Okay, foreign, as I was saying, foreign, the concept of foreign direct investment is introduced by Himmer himself. Uh, secondly, the idea of specific advantages associated with foreign direct investments is also an idea that will last over time, and it will particularly it will be, it will be exploited also by other authors such as Dunning that we will study in future, uh, in future classes. Also, uh, the idea of removal of conflicts inspired several future uh, developments, such as the one that we also will start in this course, which is the approach based on the nation state. At the same time, this approach by Himmer has some weaknesses, uh, and in particular, the weaknesses are the, um, the following. First of all, the theory, um, in a certain sense, uh, um, overemphasize how transnational company takes up investment opportunities rather than local firms, underplaying the issue of international oligopolists fighting to get into specific markets and, um, uh, and locations. So, basically, in a certain sense, uh, uh, it limits the strategic analysis of uh, uh, interaction between different uh, uh, main player, if you want, and focuses mainly on the interaction between large companies on one hand who wants to carry out foreign direct investments and local firm who suffer the uh, foreign direct investments coming from the, um, from the large company. And this, in a sense, is uh, so, so some sort of a limit uh, of, the, um, uh, of, the, of the analysis. Secondly, uh, in a sense, uh, the main determinants of uh, uh, foreign direct investments that Himmer identifies, those associated with the extensions of market power, if you think about that, are in general, however, a uh, driver of all types of investments. Okay, so uh, all type of investments allows you, even, even if you undertake them in your home country, to extend your market power and, if you play them uh, strategically, to remove conflict. So they are, in a sense, in, in, with, in this way, in this sense, the specificity of internationalization that is associated with foreign direct investments is underplayed. And finally, uh, the theory overemphasizes the costs of internationalization and underplay the advantages. So, with respect to the advantages, as I just said, uh, and with respect to the costs, instead, the costs are indeed costs that are, that are specific to foreign direct investments, but if you combine the, this to the fact that uh, the theory underplays the role of, uh, of the benefits, in a sense, because uh, it underplays the specificity of these benefits, then, of course, there is an imbalance between the importance of cost as opposed, as opposed to the importance of benefits in, uh, in explaining uh, the final choice of the firms. Um, okay, so, um, of course, after the uh, contribution by Himmer, then there has been several uh, authors who have tried to expand on his framework. Okay, so as I was saying, he's the first one who focused on multinational companies. Uh, he's the first one who introduced the concept of FDI. But after that, of course, other authors started to be interested in trying to explain the patterns of FDI that was emerging worldwide. 
So uh, the key issue was the development became, after him, or the development of a theory capable of explaining the diffusion of foreign direct investments. Uh, and in particular, uh, it became uh, all the more clear uh, the need to differentiate with, uh, uh, FDI from other types of investments, which was the uh, main point that, what, that motivated Himmer's uh, contribution. So, one of the first theory that uh, started to be applied to the analysis of FDI is the so-called product life cycle theory. Okay, so the product life cycle was basically a theoretical approach that was sort of rooted in one uh, main issue that was emerging around the 60s, which was the issue of technological gap among countries. So at that time it became clear that um, um, uh, countries in the world were differentiated by difference in technological knowledge. There were some countries that had more, uh, that their knowledge that was, from the technological point of view, more advanced, and other countries that were lagging behind in terms of technological capabilities. And this, of course, had an impact on competitive advan uh, advantages um, that the two that the different types of countries could have. So, some countries, uh, thanks to their uh, uh, more advanced technological knowledge, they had more uh, advantages in uh, producing uh, uh, technologically advanced products, and other countries that suffered of this technological gap instead found more uh, convenient to focus their production on uh, less advanced technological products. So, this analysis was also uh, relevant uh, due to the fact that it became, again, uh, evident that technological advances were not given, that they were changing over time, and in particular they were cumulative because they depended, they, 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 they dependent on, they depended on uh, technonomic, uh, dynamic economies of scales, learning by doing, and invention cumulatives. Basically, the idea is that the more you are advanced in the technology, the higher uh, is the probability that you will identify, you will come up with new invention, with new technological innovation, with new knowledge, and this creates, again, a cumulative uh, uh, process in the uh, acquisitions of technological capabilities, which, in a certain sense, creates a divergence in the patterns of uh, technological accumulation uh, among countries.